the wait is over. The most anticipated single board computer is finally here. At this time, we can only ask for your patience and that you kindly refrain from contacting our support team about when your order might ship. We simply won't be able to provide an accurate timeline for you. SparkFun, along with other retailers, are at the mercy of receiving additional allotments as the new Pi 5s are produced. We recommend keeping your order active with us as it is the only way to keep your spot in line. Thank you again for your business with SparkFun and we hope to continue providing you with your electronic needs in the future. But let me know in the comments if you have a Raspberry Pi, if you've purchased a Raspberry Pi and you're just waiting on it to get here, or if you're just not interested right now and you're just gonna wait till they're actually in stock before you buy one. But with that being said, the people that do have their Raspberry Pi 5s are doing some pretty cool stuff with them. Lee PSP Video, I think that's how you pronounce that name. He made a video about joining the Pi 5 with a touchscreen and a tablet enclosure and creating the first Raspberry Pi 5 tablet. And I thought that was pretty cool. I'll put a link for that in the description. There's also tons of videos out there on emulation performance, as well as increasing the storage capacity, and also some videos on using the PCI E slot that's on the Raspberry Pi 5 and attaching an external GPU. Custom cases for the Raspberry Pi 5 are already being 3D printed and sold on Etsy. Nothing too crazy yet. Most of them are just the snappable, no screw cases that you can kind of just take two pieces and snap them together. But the fact that we're still so early in release and not a lot of people have Raspberry Pi 5s, the fact that there are already cases out there that we can go and get once we get our Raspberry Pi 5s is pretty promising. I also slid over to the Raspberry Pi subreddit to see what they were up to. Not much going on. One interesting thing that I did see on the subreddit that they're doing some 1080p transcoding with the Raspberry Pi 5, which is not very possible with the Raspberry Pi 4. I tried it a little bit in a video I did about turning the Raspberry Pi 4 into a media server, but the Raspberry Pi 5 looks like it's going to be a decent media server as well as able to do a little bit of transcoding, which is very promising. There are a couple of gripes I've seen floating around there. One of them was that the cases that you use for your Raspberry Pi 4, most of them won't work on the Pi 5. They wanted the form factor to be exactly the same, but you know, you got to move some things around, accommodate for new technology. I didn't expect it to have the same exact layout and be able to use the same cases. I also saw a couple of complaints about the required specs for the power adapter and the fact that the stock adapter that Raspberry Pi ships is 27 watts. But now that we're on the topic of power consumption, that leads us also to another issue that was solved by Jeff Gearling. In his blog post, he mentions the Raspberry Pi 5, much like its predecessor, the Raspberry Pi 4 does not completely power off the system on a chip when shut down. Instead, it enters a shutdown state but continues to consume 1.2 to 1.6 watts of power. This power consumption is pretty high considering it's off. The reason given for this design choice is to accommodate certain hats. Hats are kind of what it sounds like. There are other boards that you sandwich on top of the Raspberry Pis that fit onto the connectors like a hat. It stands for hardware attached on top. This may encounter issues if the 3v3 power rail is off while 5 volt remains active. Consequently, the Pi 5 is set by default to keep the SOC powered on to prevent such problems, resulting in continuous power consumption. Jeff has a fix that drops the consumption down to 0.01 watts while shut down. I'll put a link for that in the description as well. Another content creator, Data Slayer, made a video showing off the power of the Zima board compared to the Pi 5. But despite the Zima board's strengths, the Raspberry Pi is still favored for its established position in the market, as well as the ecosystem built around it. And that's what I expected from the Raspberry Pi 5. I didn't expect it to come in and just blow everybody out of the water as far as power is concerned. I expected it to come in as a good leap from the Raspberry Pi 4 since it's been so long, but also keeping things very efficient, very compact, which is very important for Raspberry Pi 5, and then also having a really polished default operating system like Raspberry Pi OS, which they did release a new build of the Raspberry Pi OS when the Raspberry Pi 5 dropped keeping its flag planted as the easiest single board computer ecosystem to get into. But now that we have a decent understanding of what the Pi 5 is all about, what do you want to see next from it? A couple of things I want to see come out here soon are more cases, more heat sinks. I want to see a kit that turns a Raspberry Pi 5 into a gaming handheld. And I also want to see more media server stuff. Like I said, I made a video on the Pi 4 and turning it into a media server with Jellyfin. And I want to do the same thing with the Pi 5. So let's let's get the ball rolling. I want to I at least want to see some more people do some more uh, transcoding and more media server software. If you've seen some videos out there, let me know because I've been looking for them. If you're still waiting on your Pi 5, here's that video I mentioned earlier about when I turned the Pi 4 into a Jellyfin server. Until next time, peace.